Hey, Paul, I finally got uh, TN8K tonight. Oh, great. Good. Yeah, that, cool. I think I, I was on, uh, what was that, 12 meters. 12 where's, meters. where's that? That's Congo. Uh, Congo. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think I worked in that. West Africa. Um, yeah, there's a group of them. I think they're from Czechoslovakia there for yeah. until, they're there until I think the 21st. The 21st. And I've worked, I, I, it, it wasn't a new one for me, but I worked them, I think I've worked them on nine slots so far between FT8 and CW. I, ha I have not been able to work crows at. I, I have only worked them on, uh, th on 30 meters. I, he's been on 40, uh, and not on 40, he's been on 20, uh, and he's been on 15, but I can't hear him uh he's yeah. working, he's wearing working i can see who he's working he's working europeans i don't see him working yeah. on the state side except, yeah I, I see the same guys calling him over and over except, and over and over oh, yeah. and over except again. on <laughs> except on 30 meters and i i got him on 30 meters uh nick got him on 30 meters and jim got him on 30 meters i don't know who else but um i told harold about him today and i said you know go get him because 15 years before yeah. somebody else gets back or so yeah well this is this is not really a true de-expedition i mean it's one guy working when he can as much as he can well it's the de-expedition of a one guy but i mean it's enough i mean they i was telling harold they the french authorities wouldn't let any ham radio operators go there since you know the early 2000s mm -hmm. and there was some question if they ever would. And then this guy came along and whether he had some juice or whatever he had, he, he was mm -hmm. able to get there. But as I said to Harold, it's a crazy deal because he's there until the next boat arrives, which isn't yeah. until the end of March. Yeah. But he's only well, he got can... a license until January 26th. Yeah. yeah. I read that. Yeah. Maybe uh, they'll take pity on him and, you know, because I don't know what he's going to do for the other two months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's pretty desolate. Go, go, go count the penguins, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> uh, well, maybe. Well, maybe he's a scientist or something and has a you know a. Stake. I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't, he, oh, has, yeah. he has to shut down for four or five hours every day, uh, so while they take certain scientific measurements. So, hmm. I mean, it's it's a crazy deal, but at least he's there. So. Yeah quite the project just to get there oh i know yeah. and then he's on the way back he's supposed to stop at Tromelin and kurgolin yeah. uh, oh. which are two that i also need but he's they're not going to let him get off the boat so <laughs> how much power were you running when you worked him 100 watts oh really okay yeah. i don't know I, i've been I've... i haven't turned my amplifier on in months you know uh. Well, after after I had no results at uh, forty or fifty watts, I kicked it up to like ninety watts, and then I pushed it up to two hundred watts. And I still haven't had any luck. <laughs> yeah. Well, I when I got him, it took me over an hour uh, of calling him on FT8 to get him, which is that's a legitimate FT8. Yet. I'm mm -hmm. also looking at the uh, WRTC guys that are the month of January. So I got forty three contacts already. So that's well, I'm, I'm happy. Thing. I'll get the certificate. <laughs> I love I love wallpaper. Yeah, more yeah. wallpaper. <laughs> I'm running out of walls though. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Yeah. I've got a few that are relegated to the manila file, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I put them in sleeve protectors and I bind I put them in a three ring binder. Oh, that's oh, a good idea. That's a good yeah. idea. Actually, some of them, I uh, uh, two or three of them that I have, I, I actually printed them out on eight by ten photo paper with the photo printer, yeah. you know, as opposed to just regular paper. So uh, they look a lot; they come out a lot crisper that way, and the colors are a little more vibrant than you know, just having them on you know regular paper. So uh, I can I can understand. And then when I'm gone, my grandkids will just use them for uh, kindling. Yeah, toilet yep. paper. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh my goodness! In Where? my old in my old age, I've surmised that you have to do it for yourself. That's right. 
Not a bad idea. <laughs> you know, hey, if you can't have fun, what are you going to do? Right. Well, I'm just looking to see. I don't think I have. Oh, wait. Here he comes, I think. All right, that's his wife. Hey. Hey, there you are, Mark. Okay, it came on as, as your wife's uh, uh, well, picture. Well, she has the account. I can, you know what? I Somebody showed me how to change that the other day. Let's see if I can do this. Just right click on your name and uh, that's I, what they I can do it for you too, actually, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'll bet, <laughs> I'll bet your wife looks better than you do. Oh, she is. <laughs> she looks you know, a lot I, younger too. <laughs> I didn't shave today and uh, I got to get up at six and, uh, I apologize. I uh, things really, really got hectic for me this afternoon, but I'm okay now. Okay. So let well, me. Uh, we, we we got a small group, and I've already gotten like four or five emails saying I, I can't make the meeting, but I want I'm anxious to watch it on on uh, once we post it to our YouTube channel. So absolutely, absolutely. So I'm um, I uh, hopefully I'm okay here, and I just need to pull up uh, the presentation and. Uh, can where you, you hear me? Where, yeah, where are you located, Mark? Oh, let me share the screen. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'm I'm located in South Florida, about six months out of the year. I'm in uh, Palm Beach County, just uh, around Jupiter, Palm Beach Gardens area, and then I have a I have a home in uh, Colorado that uh, we normally go out about uh, first of June, and we're out there until about mid October. It's up in the high country, about nine thousand feet, just. Uh, uh at the western portal of rocky mountain national park nice mm. so so we're we go both ways <laughs> i tried to i can't handle the heat down here it's just in the summertime we we've been down here since 05 but uh it's just been really really it gets hot down here <laughs> okay uh, i forgot what i'm doing here one person shared it okay time. yeah i'm gonna bring up the presentation and uh Stand by just a second. All right. Yeah. See if that comes up. And okay. Can you see my screen? Yeah. You spelled Hamden wrong, but good try. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I can see that right now. <laughs> you know why? That's that's actually because that's the Floridian you know, way to spell it. It's H A M P D E N. How's that? That looks Perfect. better. <laughs> okay. So um, are we ready to go? You've got it. It's all yours, my friend. Fantastic. Fantastic. How many uh, are most of these Zoom audiences or are you there in your meeting or uh, we're we're all we're all on Zoom tonight. We're not in live. That's perfect. Uh, we we do that in my uh, meeting uh, down here. Uh, we just started meeting about two or three months ago, the firehouse where we meet in, uh, <clears throat> they they were just still paranoid about COVID and we couldn't get back in. So anyway, we're back in now. So well, we, we, right. ha we have we have a Friday once a month, Friday night live meetings. And then we have these are called share the knowledge, which are a mini meeting on certain um, subjects uh, a couple times a month on a Tuesday night. OK, on Zoom, only on Zoom. Okay, very good. Let me get started. I'm going to uh, try to keep this to 30 minutes, and then I'd just like to leave a little bit of time uh, for, for open questions, because I, I, don't, uh, I don't know the background of everybody there, and I don't know how much you know and how much you don't know. So what I'll probably do is skip a few slides where I get into the, into the dirt, you know, about scoring and that kind of thing. But I'll just, I'll try to keep it moving along, and then if I miss anything, I can I can pick it up in the Q and A. Yeah, if that's okay. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let me just tell you who I am. I uh, I've been in ham radio sixty years this year, and uh, uh, thank God I married a younger woman. <laughs> uh, but I uh, it's it's been a wonderful hobby for me. Uh, I uh, uh, I've had I've had many interests and they've come and go gone, but AM radio has been pervasive. It's been with me my entire life, and uh, 
and I love, I still love it today. I just, and I love DXing today. And uh, so uh, I was born and raised in Peoria, Illinois, and I actually went to Bradley University. I graduated with a double uh, electrical engineering degree, and, uh, and I, I went on to get my MBA. And uh, I, uh, uh, I was pretty much spent my whole career with three companies, Westinghouse Electric, uh, a, uh, uh, another company for a very short period of time, and then Toshiba International Corporation, where I was almost exclusively in the power generation business, you know, steam turbine generators, gas turbines, and that kind of thing. I retired four years ago, and uh, and uh, like I said, I just uh, 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 I, I just enjoy this hobby like crazy, and uh, here we go on my presentation. That's who I am. So. Uh, I'm going to go through just a couple slides here. What what is the, I call it the DXers dilemma? Okay, I got into ham radio, and probably many of you got into ham radio because you just the 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 excitement of being able to talk to somebody halfway around the world was was uh, was really an exciting thing to do. And I was in grade school, and I was sixth grade, and I had this gal I really liked, and. Her dad, uh, who was an engineer for Caterpillar Tractor Company in Peoria, uh, was a ham radio operator. And I went over to his house and I saw his setup and I saw him operate. And I mean, lock, stock and barrel. I just said, I, I got to do this. I got to do this. So uh, so I got in it mainly for DX. And, you know, we've got about 800,000 hams in the U.S. And uh, the number internationally actually has decreased. We're less than three million now somewhere between two and a half and three million. But uh, I got to believe that along the way, so many of us got in it for DXing. And I, I still believe, I don't know the percentages, but a lot of people love DX. But if a lot of you who are veterans are like me, you know, you got every plaque, you got every award, you know, you say, well, what the heck? Why, why do it anymore? Okay. And then you have on the other side of the spectrum, you've got folks that are just coming in and uh, and don't know a whole lot about it, but want to get interested in it. So I, the way I look at DXing today, uh, not to not to not to downplay people who love uh, you know our uh, uh, VHF, UHF, or moon bounce, or all these other things that we have in our hobby. Um, I still think there's a huge population of people that really really enjoy. Uh, DXing. But as I said, uh, we've got a dilemma today. Uh, there's lots of things that go on that might affect one's uh, interest in uh, DXing. And I just named a few here, and I'm just going to kind of go through these slides uh, faster than slower. Um, there's a lot of ways that we can DX today. There's contesting. I used to be a huge contester. And quite frankly, I kind of burn out of contesting, you know, I kind of today like serenity in my life and I don't really fathom and I'm not poo-pooing contesters. I I've got a lot of friends that are contesters, but you know, uh, to sit, uh, you know, sit in a chair for 48 consecutive hours and just beat yourself to death. To me, I, I kind of lost interest in that. Although I, I still do some contests. I just don't do it to the extent I used to do it. You got the XCC, but as I mentioned, a lot of people as old as I am, you know, we've we've done it all. So the dilemma still is, OK, how how can I still get involved in DXing, uh, you know, in the in so much as I've achieved almost everything. So the alternative is what I'm trying to or what I'm going to attempt to present to uh, you folks this evening. And uh, and it's called the DX Marathon program. OK, now the DX Marathon program. Uh, just to give a little history, if my slide will come up here. Uh, before I give the history, I must announce, we just posted the 2022 preliminary unreviewed scores today. I can, I can say today that the DX Marathon program is the fastest growing ham radio DX programming in our hobby today. The reason I can say that is between 20 and 21, we had about a 15% growth in terms of submissions. And between 2021 and 2022, which were just turned in between January 1st and January 5th, 
we had a 32% growth in the number of submissions. That's participants. Uh, that is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. But I'm going to talk about why I think this is happening. Okay, what is the DX Marathon program? It's an annual program. It's not a contest per se. It's a program on January 1st, you start working DX stations. You work the DXCC countries, which I'll explain in a minute. That's 340 countries plus we add a few countries onto that, giving a total of 346. And you try to work as many zones as you can, zone one through zone 40. That's it. And you have all year long to do that. Okay, one big advantage, um, you're going to hear me say this a number of times tonight, it's simple. It's simple. This is a very simple program. There's no sign up. You can start right now and you turn in your score at the end of the year. That's all you got to do. There's no cost association associated with the program. Big time, there's no confirmations. You don't have to confirm through QSL or LOTW or any other way. And I'll talk about that in a little bit because, you know, integrity is very important and it's a cornerstone of the, pro, uh, the, the uh, program. And we have ways that we can still keep people honest. But the bottom line is you don't have to confirm through all these other means. It's an excuse to get on the air, you know? Uh, you can do it in parcels. You can do it sort of what I call sanely. You can decide to operate, you know, an hour today, an hour tomorrow, whatever you want to do. Uh, this next point is very important because I call it a program because, you know, it's not really a contest, although there is an element of participants that that compete. And, and we, 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 uh, we score at the end of the year and we have many, many categories, which I'm going to mention in a second, but we basically... Some people love the competition. And if you want to do that, that's fine. I've been in the program for five or six years. The reason I'm in the program is because I just like to see how I'm doing as an operator. And I like to see how my equipment's performing and how effective I can get improving every year, year to year in my DX capabilities. That's what I do. And I can tell you this year, I made a huge leap. Last year, I had about 175, 180. I had 281 this year, which is for me the all-time best in five or six years. It'll be my last year because I'm pulling myself, of course, out of the competition now since I'm administering the program. But it's very gratifying uh, in that respect. Okay, where did it come from? This is really interesting. I didn't know this before, but uh, originally the program started in 1939 by a, a, a organization called Radio Magazine, which was CQ Magazine's predecessor. They ran it for one year and it was suspended because of World War II. And it wasn't then resuscitated until after the war. The CQ staff put it together in 1948. It lasted one year and for whatever reason, I don't know the history behind that, they introduced the CQ Worldwide Contest that year. Uh, and DXCC was introduced. So it just kind of went by the wayside. It was resurrected in 2005 by W9KNI, who was at, at that time uh, in Chicago. Uh, Bob Locher, some of you've read his book. Uh, he's got a published book, which is excellent if you haven't read it, about DXing. It's done a lot different today than it was done back then. Uh, but he approached CQ Magazine and he said, hey, let's let's rejuvenate the the DX Marathon and DX, uh, uh, CQ Magazine said, okay, Bob, take it away. So Bob basically constructed, it's a little bit different than it is now, but uh, sat down and put the rules together and the categories together and basically the shell of the program. And he went out and recruited one K9EL, Mr. John Sweeney, uh, who said, sure, I'll administer the program. And for 17 consecutive years, John Sweeney has administered the program, and uh, and he's done a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous job. Uh, last year, uh, 
Uh, John's in the process of building a home in Florida, and this I can't I can't enumerate in words what effort John has put into this program and how he's grown it and what it takes to administer it. But I I got an e I know John through a mutual friend of mine W4QN down here in Florida, and I'd known John's for a number of years. And when I saw that he was looking for a successor, I called him up and I said, John, tell me what's involved here, and. After about 10 minutes, I said, John, John, I got to have a lot. I'm retired. I got I mean, I, I had a very uh, intense career uh, that I love. But I mean, you know, I'm trying to get serenity into my life. And I said, you know, I don't think I can do it. But I said I, I was an EVP and uh, I built or I built organizations. And I said, you know, if if you will allow me to get some help on this thing, I think I can put together a structure to keep it going. And basically he said, tell me what you're thinking about. And I literally wrote a business plan and uh, we, we wrote job descriptions and everything else. This was six, seven, eight months ago. And here we are today and I'm taking it over and I've got a phenomenal staff of people. Anyway, I'll go through those details. I created a board of directors. I'm not gonna go through this detail, but I, I'm kind of running this like a company now, unlike the way John, John was a single man operation. I mean, God bless him the way, it's incredible, incredible what he did. But I got a board and I tried to get, uh, get a, a geographical diversity here. But more importantly, I've got a set of operating managers that is beyond what I ever expected. Uh, uh, extremely talented people. And, uh, you know, John put a process chart together for me and we literally said, all right, what functions do we need to run this program? And we basically need a scoring manager, an IT manager, a communications manager, a rules and compliance manager, and an awards manager. So that's what we did. And I won't bore you with this anymore, but all I can tell you is I, I truly believe that we will do as good a job or maybe better because we've got, all of these people have been ham radio operators for 30, 40, 50 years, and they've all participated in the X Marathon. So we're blessed with this team. I'm not going to go through this. I've got an advisory board because we are an international program, and occasionally I may need to bounce some things, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bounce them off of some international representation. Okay. All right. Let's get down into the meat. Why, why would you want to participate? Okay. I mentioned earlier, ham radio is DX. It, it gives you some incentive every year to work the world, to work DX. There's no multipliers. There's no formulas. There's no QSL cards. You take your logging program, and I, use, I happen to use DX Labs, but there's many out there. <clears throat> uh, Dave in DX Labs and Keeper, he's actually written a section in DX Keeper, which keeps track of all of your marathon uh, countries and zones. So I can go back anytime and just look at those and I can, I can get an instant uh, snapshot of where I am. So you can do that throughout the year. Uh, it kind of gives you a little boost to remain active and it's great for clubs. Uh, we have club competition. If you name a club in the submission form, we, we assimilate all the clubs and we total the clubs. We've got clubs now all over the world that are competing for the top two or three spots. If you have a club and you want to create an internal competition among groups, you can do that. And at your annual meeting, you can issue awards or whatever. Very, very, very simple. Okay, participation is easy. You get on the air and you chase DX. As I mentioned, there's 346 country entities. There's the DXCC countries of 340, plus these six additional that, uh, that we add, which are uh, WAE uh, uh, additional countries. So 346 plus 40, that's your maximum possible score. And of course, nobody ever achieves that because many of these entities are not activated in any given year. In fact, lots are not activated. Okay, what we do, I'm going to, these next two slides is kind of the gut, the heart and gut and soul of the program. We try to make this program uh, possible no matter, no matter what kind of equipment you have, 
uh, no matter what kind of towers or antennas or power you have, what we try to do, and I'm in the process of redoing this over because we've got we've 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 got some we've got some uh, uh, gaps in this, and I, we're going to do try to do a little better job in 2024 in in, in putting these together. But uh, if you're unlimited, if you've got a Yagi like I do up 100 feet, and and I run a linear and everything else. I'm competing with like what we're basically trying to do here, guys, is we're trying to create level playing fields among these categories. That's that's what we're doing. So if you're competing at 100 watts with Yagi uh, with booms of no longer than 16 feet, we, we want you to be in the same class as people with similar stats all over the world so that you can try to get parity. How am I doing, you know, against these other people? So anyway, I won't go through this, but that's, we, we, and we have a QRP class, which is formula five, five Watts maximum, uh, same antennas is limited, but, but uh, anyway, it's, uh, so that's the first, that's the first tranche we do. We're trying to create these classes. And then the second tranche, which I think is phenomenal is let's say you're one of these guys that don't like FT8. Okay. And you want to compete on a, SSB basis, or you want to compete only on CW, like my friend W4QN, he's 80, Norm W4QN in 2019, I think he was 83 years old, and he's a, he doesn't operate any FT8, he wanted to, he wanted to uh, enter only on CW, all bands, that year he achieved a total points of 317 on CW, which was the highest, still the highest achieved CW score in the history of marathon. If you want to do side bet, if you just want to do digital, just do digital. If you want to do all three, do all three. You could also choose um, a band. Maybe you want to just compete on 40 meters, or maybe you want to compete on 10 meters. Now cycle 25 is coming, and you want to see how well you do. Just enter it on 10 meters. So my point here, guys, is that is that this has whatever your likes are or wherever you think you want to spend time DXing, we've got a place for you. Repeating myself here, the rules are very simple. We restrict it. You know, we got a lot of remote stations. I got a remote station down here because I live in a, in a HOA community. We got restrictive covenants. I got a station out in Colorado. My, my example is perfect. I can enter one station separately. I could actually enter my Colorado station and compete on that basis and through a separate submission, enter my station down here. You can, I couldn't use both of those stations. And believe me, we have ways to find out. I can't use both of those stations uh, as a singular submission. Uh, so no multiple sites. Uh, I mentioned remote sites is okay, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not going to go through these rules. Uh, if you have a pen or uh, if you could just write this down, uh, our website is www.dxmarathon.com. There is a wealth of information on that site. All of these rules that I've been through, helpful hints. We, For example, we've got every listed call in Antarctica. You will not believe how many calls are registered in Antarctica. But you know, even if you're in the program or out of the program, it is a resource if you're a DXer that you can use. Okay, uh, this is the entry form. It's basically, you, you download it from the website. It basically is an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, so I'm gonna skip the next few slides and I'm just, if we can look at this from the 30,000 foot level, here's the way you convert your data, your cues to, this sheet. If you've got a logging program, okay, most logging programs, you're able to isolate, let's say your 2020, uh, 2022 cues, and you're able to generate an ADIF file. If you can generate an ADIF file, you can fill out this sheet. It's a very automatic thing. I'm not going to go through the details, but the key is you must generate an ADIF file from the cues that you were worked in that particular year, okay? All right, I, I'm gonna, a lot of this is minutia. Uh, 
as I said, we we take uh, an honor system very seriously. We we realize the the viability of our program is a function of the integrity of the scores that we are scoring and receiving, and it's a it's a function of the integrity and the honesty of our participants. And we have John has taught me and taught this team so many ways. If we first of all. Uh, blatant cheating is is very 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 small. Most of the cheating, it's not really cheating. Is somebody maybe an international participant that that don't that that actually don't understand the antenna rules clearly. They might not know English, and I'm doing something about that too. That that uh, that regional board I talked about. I'm I'm going to put a hyperlink in our new website, which we're bringing out uh, middle part of February. Uh, I'm going to put a hyperlink to different languages, and I'm going to ask them to translate the rules in their native language. If it's Japanese, if it's Chinese, Indonesian, uh, uh, European, whatever. Okay, uh, but the blatant cheating is 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 not. It's just not there. So we got good people. Uh, <laughs> we have lots of ways that we can verify, especially in the competitive environment where we're looking at the top four or five scores. Sometimes there'll only be one or two points separating, we scrub those logs. I already got the logs. Some of you uh, probably work uh, K8H in America, Samoa. I got all his logs. So, you know, we'll look, we'll, we'll compare those against people who are claiming to have worked them and they better be. Otherwise, I mean, we don't, <laughs> we don't whack them with a stick. We just deduct a point, okay? If, if we can't verify a log or if you have a broken call or you don't check a zone right, uh, for example, uh, I learned through this program, I thought QRZ was sacred. I want to tell you, I went through my log and I found 1% CQ zone errors in my log. I've got 33,000 Qs in my DX Keeper, 1%, almost 3,000 CQ zones were wrong. And believe it or not, in QRZ, if that's your database, CQ zones and ITU zones are put in by the operator. And what I found is many times they're flip-flopped. They, they put them in the wrong field. That's a bad zone. And if you enter that into your zone contact and it's a bad zone, you get deducted a point. So we, we, we do encourage people what, before log submission, check your logs very carefully. You've worked very hard to work this DX. Just check them over. Uh, now, I put this in any participant who violates the rules. I'm having my rules. One of my friends is a lawyer. He's the rules and compliance. Hey, guys, I, I told him that, that we're in a hobby. This is fun. You know, I don't want to I don't want to get ugly here. But, you know, we've got to have some consequences. If, if there's a blatant, I got a board of directors now. If there's a blatant violation of rules to take really significant advantage, or if it's happened a couple, three times, we may have to take some more stringent action than just deducting a point, but we haven't seen that to date. Uh, when scoring is complete, the annual results, uh, we just posted those on our website. You can go to that website that I told you, www.dxmarathon.com, and you'll see the preliminary results. So will give you a nice snapshot of all the categories that we have. Okay, we do issue plaques uh, and we issue certificates. And I'm not gonna go through this detail, it's all on the website, uh, and, but it's, it's, it's pretty comprehensive. Uh, I decided in 2023 that I did not wanna change the rules for 2022 as we're making this transition. I just wanna make sure we can adequately manage it, but we have plans in 2024 to add categories and do some uh, really interesting things uh, to increase the number of plaques and certificates, especially now where, my God, last year we grew at a 30% clip, which is just, it, it just blows my mind. Uh, okay, let me go through that. We, what makes us tick, we, we are a, we have, we have no uh, income. Uh, the plaques and the certificates, we have sponsors, okay? And we have very generous sponsors. Okay. Now, having said that, you will notice if you go to that web page, I do have a PayPal hyperlink. And what I uh, told our board of directors is 
Uh, whenever there was a shortfall, and John unfortunately had him, John's very, very, very well off. He was a CEO of something up in Canada, and he'd just kick in and pay for it. But, you know, we need a little bit of an operating budget so that, uh, especially now, as we look into 2024, and we want to grow the program that might involve software changes, it, it there could be some expenses. So, if if you're if you're generous and you want to throw five bucks in or ten bucks in, you know we had, you know we had uh, we had almost a thousand uh, we had over a thousand submissions almost eleven hundred submissions this year. You know if everybody threw five bucks in, my God, that would be that would be enough working capital that if we had to if we had to go back and 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 tap that to 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 cover some expenses, we could do that. So. Uh, basically, that's it. We've got amazingly generous uh, volunteers. That's what offsets our cost. We, of course, are all just volunteers. Now, this, these next two slots, this is going to blow your mind. It's interesting because if you go back to 2014 and you go back to today, you can see that based on a QSO submitter, even though when the solar flux was horrible and we were in cycle 24, we we held pretty steady in terms of submissions, which I think is says something for the program. Now what you're going to see, and you're we saw this year, but even last year, as as cycle 25 come comes in, and it is coming in like a lion, not a lamb. Uh, we're seeing a lot of uh, active, uh, 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 much higher number of submissions coming in, and and this is going to accelerate, guys, for the next five, six, seven years. So, man, if if you're in DX, now's the time to get in it. Uh, uh, this is what the, the cycle 25, as you can see, the, the, the red line was the prediction. And we're, we're beating the heck out of prediction right now. Where it's going to go, we don't know. But it's certainly starting out uh, very fast. And based on the mix of cues, we had uh, five or six times the number of 10-meter cues submitted this year as we had last year. 15 meters was the, was the top number one band of cues this year. 20 meters was almost on parity as last year, about 42,000 cues. Here's another interesting thing. Uh, like it or hate it, FT8 has had a big impact. FT8 has had an impact on our hobby. FT8 has had an impact on Marathon. In 2021, uh, digital, as you can see on the left chart, uh, grew to almost 69% of all the queues submitted. This year, it was 72%. Uh, that's that's the way it is. That's you know that's like it or like it or hate it. That's what it is. Uh, we, we you know innovation has been part of our hobby. Uh, I've been in it 60 years, and you know there'll be something after FT8. It's not going to stop. Uh, we've got we've got innov innovation is ham radio, so it will continue. Uh, you can expected uh, uh, band splits there. As I mentioned, uh, 15 and 17 meters uh, grew substantially in 2022, mainly uh, sunspot, uh, sunspot 25 driven. Uh, last year, uh, we had 807 logs submitted with 144,000 cues. This year, we here's your 32% growth. We had 1182 submitted with 216,000 uh, cues submitted. Uh, last year, the top score was 314. Believe it or not, this year, I think I think the top score is just a little bit higher than that, but not much. Uh, the error rate, now this is not the cheating rate, this is just mistakes made on submissions. Uh, it's the lowest it's been. Most people that are participating are checking their logs or making the, sure the CQ zones are right. They're, they're, they're making sure there's zeros or O's or there are O's or zeros in their calls. So wrong zone, believe it or not, is 32% of all the errors found. Invalid calls, uh, you know, we do list on our website, we list every pirate that we can possibly list. So we encourage our participants to go check the pirate list and look at their logs and make sure you're not claiming a pirate for a zone or whatever. Chances are you'll have multiple uh, entities in one zone. You don't want to put a pirate in a zone listing if you've got another one that you can use. Uh, wrong country, uh, busted calls, that's a zero and O oh, and that kind of thing. Our mix, 70% or I don't know what it is this year, but about 70% are in that unlimited category. 
9% were in single band and 27% were single mode. And there's your club scores down at the bottom. Uh, Northern Illinois DX Association, of which John K9EL is a member, they used to kill that all the time. Brazil has made a huge effort. And here you got Western Washington DX Club stepping up too. And I don't know where that, we haven't done the calculations. Uh, last year, the Unlimited, some of you may know, uh, JH1AJT, that's Zorro. Zorro passed away last year. Uh, uh, tremendous ambassador for our hobby, wonderful man. Uh, he died of cancer last year, but uh, he was the top unlimited score uh, last year. And you can see where all the other ones fall. Okay. Uh, this is a part, it's just, I, I don't want to go at this, to this level. Uh, I, I will mention this though. Sebastian, uh, KI2D is my IT uh, uh, manager. He has developed a web-based tool that all you do from your log is you import your ADIF file in here and it this is only a partial output it will print this out and it will these are all your dx uh, your uh, marathon entities with zones down at the bottom on the left side it will tell you it'll automatically place all those in there it'll tell you whether it's confirmed you don't need it but it'll just tell you that it'll tell you how many like down here, Fiji, I worked Fiji 20, this is my log actually, I worked Fiji 25 times last year. So you can click on that and get a drop down. And if you don't like your submittal, you can change it. And then up at the top, there's an arrow, it says generate submission, one click, you copy the ADIF file, you paste it in the submission, poof, you submit it. Uh, we're also in the submission sheet next year, this is the one you download and you submit. We're going to have drop down menus for antennas because we're not getting adequate descriptions of antennas. So we're going to have drop down. Do you have a long wire? How long is it? How long is it? Do you have a Yagi? How high it is, et cetera, et cetera. So we're doing a lot of things. And let's skip this over here. I just got this quote uh, from uh, Paula, K9IR. She actually wrote me this and I just read through that. And to me, this is, this is the heart of soul for me. And I think a lot of people that participate in this program, they, they don't do it for plaques. They don't do it for certificates. They just do it for fun. And they do it as a measure of how well they're doing in DX. But I, I love this. Uh, I love this quote, you know, it's just, it, it kind of says it for me. And I think it says it for a lot of participants in our program. Not everybody is going for the gold in the program. You can, if you want, but you don't need to do that. You're really comparing yourself against like, uh, like operators with like equipment on like bands. And, uh, As I said, we, we've got we've got huge supporters. Uh, uh, I needed two sponsors, and I gave two presentations. And a sponsorship for a plaque is a hundred dollars. I mean, we're not one club I talked to had a had an operating budget. They're very well off of twenty six thousand dollars. Okay, a hundred dollars is 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 chump change to them. So I'm I'm in good shape as we grow the program uh, for for clubs uh, stepping up uh, uh, for sponsorships, but uh, there's a lot of generous people out there that, uh, that really love the program and they wanna see it continue on. So uh, as I said, for 2024, we're looking at, none of these are, all, all but one of these is pretty much just for discussion among, among my board of directors. Uh, the, uh, uh, the decathlon, is one that I'm really looking at. And, and basically what that's gonna be, is gonna be a five year rolling average of the unlimited class, the participant that has accumulated the highest number of points. I think that's dedication to, to DXing, it's dedication to the DX Marathon program. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna implement that, but uh, we have 60 meters in this too. Of course, we got all the work bands. So anyway, all right, guys.
I, I don't know if I came close to my 30 minutes, but uh, let me uh, minimize this. And I'm open for any questions that you all may have. Anybody have any questions? Yeah, I, I have one. Go ahead, Harold. Sure. Um, does everyone submit at the end of the year or do they do it in, uh, you know, every month, every two months, every six months, or does everybody in the world just dump it all on you at the end of the year? Harold, I, I couldn't have planted that question better. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank, thank you for that question. The answer to that question is uh, you can submit as many times as you want. You can submit monthly. You can submit. And I, we're encouraging people to avoid, not, not for us, because we don't start scoring until January 1st. And we got, uh, with the new tool that we got, it's very mechanized. But to, to reduce the stress on our participants, and I can't tell you how many this year I did myself. They sent me the ADIF file because they're just not computer moxie. And I did it for them. And I submitted for them. It gives us more time to get a struggling person like that uh, but to answer your question, what happens, uh, number one, uh, you can go to the website and you can see your call indicating that you submitted it, but it's not visible to anyone. It's not public. And we, we do that for a reason, because there are people in there, in here that are very competitive and there's people that don't want to you know, share their scores or whatever, and that's fine, okay? But I'm just telling you, when you put it in, uh, if you would resubmit it, it automatically, with the same call, it would automatically supersede that, and that's your current one. So you can submit it an infinite number of times during the course of the year. The last submittal will be the one that will be retained and the one that will be scored. So I, so in other words, I don't have, do I have to go into, I use DX Labs as well. So let's say I do it every month. Uh, when I submit the ADIF file, do I forget January and just submit my February one? No, you do you do your entire your oh, okay. entire ADIF year to date, uh, 2023. Got it. Yeah, and uh -huh. you know you you know Harold, you really don't need to do that. But I I like the concept. You know, at 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 at, at you know November first, I think you ought to submit it and then just kind of tweak it in the next couple months. Then it's a such a simple effort on your part. It, it is it's you know we we claim this is a it removes stress. Why should you put stress at the end of the year in trying to get, you know, clear a hiccup up or something that where, whereby you miss the, and we're, we're real strict on the submittal deadline. And the reason we are January 1st to January 5th, we cut it off January 5th. We will score you, but we won't do it as part of the program. We'll, we'll give you a score, but you won't be eligible for any certificate or anything else. And the reason that is, is I have to have uh, we, we post the preliminary scores. Now we got to go in in the next two months and we've got to vet out to make sure that everybody is worth the people they claimed. And then I, I have to have all the final results into CQ Magazine on April 1st because the, the results are printed in the, in the June issue of CQ Magazine. That's a so lot of work. It's a lot of work. So that's why we're kind of strict on the small window of submittals. I, I have a question. I'm excited. Yeah. Have you ever thought about separating um, retirees from working class? As far as <laughs> the awards go. <laughs> well, I, retirees probably, you know, they can sit in front of the radio all day, whereas us schmoes still working can't. Actually, Larry, no, we haven't. I, I can't speak for John. I've, I've been in this for eight months now. Uh, no, we haven't. And I would, it, it's an interesting question and it would be interesting to look at all the top two or three people and find out who's retired and who's not retired. But we, we gotta be careful. Uh, <clears throat> when you start separating things out there, uh, it has two impacts on our program. One, our programs have to be changed and that's not easy. All these are done at a code level. Mm -hmm. And so we gotta be sensitive to that. Uh, the, new, the new software that Larry, uh, KO7R, who is our scoring manager, has developed. He's brilliant. He's a 35-year IBM career man who coded all his life. Uh, he's absolutely a genius. Uh, but so I don't know the flexibility he's going to have uh, in doing those kinds of things. But 
uh, I guess the answer to your question is no, we haven't. <laughs> or maybe some, something more specifically towards um, youth. We have a youth, we, you know, I, it's interesting. We have a 25 year old and younger certificate. And I just got a sponsor in my last uh, meeting from the South Florida DX Association. They bellied up for a hundred dollars because I want to make that a plaque. So the 20, the, the youth program will go from a certificate to a plaque. Sounds good. Anybody else have any questions? Quiet group tonight. I'm excited. Oh, wait, oh uh, Ann, Ann and Keith have their hand up. Go ahead, Ann or Keith. Uh, this is more a comment. I really liked your presentation, and thank you very much. We love DX here. Uh, we'll be on the air tomorrow morning, so uh, sounds like a lot of fun. Well, thank you for that, and I, I, love, I look forward to seeing you next year in the program. Okay. Anybody else? No. All right. Hey, Mark, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Your your presentation was perfect. Um, we'll we'll try to have uh, our our zero beat editor, which is our newsletter, uh, Ken, put something in uh, for the February issue. Uh, you know, a little comment about the program with a link and you know pointing back to the video uh, for others that might want to learn about it. And uh, who knows, maybe some of us here even that will be uh, uh, we'll post our logs uh, come the end of this year it, uh, with the, the sunspot cycle certainly improving and a lot more DX available and uh, not needing much uh, oomph to get to the DX. Uh, uh, a little extra challenge never hurt anybody. That's wonderful. I failed to mention one other thing besides that website, we have a group IO. If you go into Group IO and search on DX Marathon, and I am trying to build this, uh, believe it or not, uh, we have, I have, over the years, I got the listing of emails of all the participants in DX Marathon. We got over 3,000. And I actually, I batched, sent out uh, emails to all the past and current participants to join the IO group. Now, why did I do that? Well, when I looked at the IO group, which I administer, I noticed there was about 120 people that were signed in the I, uh, that that were a part of the IO group. I said, "Wow!" I mean, just last year we had 800 submissions. This year we got over a thousand, 1,100. So I encouraged everybody to sign up. Why? You know, IO groups are wonderful uh, conversation pieces to talk among your peers and to share information. And, you know, for pirates and that, besides the web page, a lot of times your operating managers, myself, I'll post stuff there and you want to be aware of that. And it's, it's just a great, it's a great platform to kind of stay current with what, what's going on in Marathon. So I would encourage you to join it just uh, you know, just like any any other I.O. group, just click on it and uh, send it. I will personally approve it. And you're a member and uh, you'll get emails if, if you so choose uh, individual emails or you can group them together, just like any I.O. group. So I would encourage you to do that. OK, cool, cool. I, I just opened my uh, DX lab on my other computer and uh Pulled up the report, but I have to look at it, even though it's past due. I was just curious what the report looked like. So, hey, thank you very much uh, for joining us tonight. And hopefully you'll see some of us. Uh, hey, next hey time. Larry, if, yes. you, if you if you want, just because you're a special guy, if you want to generate your 2022 ADIF file, <laughs> send me the ADIF file. I will send you uh, Sebastian's report. And it'll blow your mind. And you'll see how you did it had you submitted it in 2022. Any hey. of you guys, if you want to do that, it takes me maybe 15 seconds to do that. It's very, very easy. That's cool. I, I'm just curious too. I just did a I just did the report, it said year 2021. How do we generate a year 2022 from DX Labs? Oh, hit hit uh, control and uh, uh, I'm going to do it right here. I got it up. Uh, if you hit uh, check progress, hit yeah. progress. But when you before you hit progress, hit the control on your keyboard. Yeah. And it'll give you a year. And you put in 2022. 
Not mine. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hit control. All right. Wait. 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 Function. Control six. Uh, CQDX marathon. Control and click progress. And okay. We'll get a, gotcha. Yep. It, and had, it, had, it, it, it'll, it'll get. You can go back. I mean, you can go back to your log in uh, 2015 and see how you did. You can cool. do it 60. Dave. Dave is an amazing. You all know Dave. Dave is. Yeah. Yeah. Dave's. Is Dave's presented to the club a few times and uh he, he that's why so up. many of us in the club use dx labs it's uh it's pretty cool okay yeah i i had to move my keyboard to the other uh you know the computer very cool very cool well so thank you, you can, thank you again I and i i might just send you my log out of curiosity well larry um, all you got to do is go go in uh to your uh dx keeper go down and put in uh january 1st 2022 you know how to do the since function yeah okay and then and then and then uh generate your adif from that it'll take you about 15 seconds and just attach that to an email and i'll and i'll send you back what the what the output would look like had you submitted it cool i might just do that okay. all right hey thank you so much uh i i really appreciate your time and uh love to see you next year sounds good very sounds good, good mark everybody have a good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. And, uh, and I'll definitely have to remind our uh, zero beat editor to uh, put that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys. Good night. Thank right, you, everybody. Night. Good night. Bye -bye. Good, good night. Bye-bye.